Hi, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about lesson number four, planets and moons. So we're going to talk about what are planets, what are moons, and other extraterrestrial um, things in our solar system. So what we do know and the big idea is that the sun has its own planetary system like many other stars do. So what are planets? How are they different from, for example, stars? Planets are celestial bodies that orbit a star. But here's the big difference, though. Because we, for example, know that planets have certain things that orbit them. Then what makes them different? Planets can only reflect light. They cannot produce it. So a star can produce light. But a planet can only reflect it. So that's a big idea there. So if we talk about a certain planet, the one we live on, how fast is the Earth moving? Well, the Earth is actually moving pretty fast. First of all, here's the first thing we gotta know. The Earth's rotation, that means the, how fast it rotates, is approximately 1,670 kilometers per hour. That's how fast it spins. Or if you wanna be more, more uh, much more magical number, it's about 0 0.5 kilometers every second. That means every second, the Earth has has rotated about 0 0.5 kilometers. Its revolution, aka how fast it moves around the sun, that's a bigger number. That's about 30 kilometers every second. That means it can fly across space around the sun at around 30 kilometers a second. But our sun is moving across the Milky Way at about 250, 250 kilometers per second around the Milky Way. So that is actually, we are actually moving very, very fast, but we don't actually realize it. So there's a very famous picture that shows how the Earth is actually moving. So if you ever see a picture that looks like this, you'll see that the, oh, the Earth actually looks like it moves like this. So you see, we are orbiting, in a sense, looks like a slinky going around the sun as the sun's traveling across the Milky Way. So we're going to talk about how did the solar system form, what the sun is, and we'll finish off today with other things that are in our solar system. So how did the solar system form? Well, our solar system formed when the sun formed. It formed approximately about four and a half billion years ago. That's approximately how old our sun is. where the first 100 million years the inner planets formed which are the rocky planets which are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars while it took a bit later for the gas giants formed later And these are the planets that are made up mostly of gas, ice, and dust. So what is the sun? Well, the sun is, of course, a star. That's the first key point. It is a star. It's the center of our solar system. And what other facts does it have? It contains 99% of the mass of our solar system. So it is massive compared to all the other planets. Approximately it's equal to about 100 times the mass of all planets combined in our solar system. Because it's so big that 110 Earths can stretch across its diameter. And it's mostly made up of hydrogen gas at the moment. Our 
hydrogen, not hydrogen gas. So that's what the sun is. Now here's a diagram showing you the different parts of a sun. So we have this diagram, we see something called solar prominence. The solar prominence are these loopy bits. They are large loops of super hot gas that extends outwards from the sun's surface, but the gravity of the sun pulls it back down. Prominences tend to be associated with sunspot activity and can stretch out in great distances. Occasionally, extremely violent eruptions of gas called solar flares also can erupt as well. So solar flares, instead of looping back, it just erupts. These eruptions can last for a few hours and can have a temperature of up to 11 million degrees. Sunspots, on the other hand, are dark patches. Some of them are actually larger than the Earth themselves. They indicate parts of the surface that are slightly cooler, about 3,500 degrees Celsius, versus the other parts. The number of sunspots increases and decreases on an 11-year cycle. The photosphere uh, is the part of the sun that most people are familiar with, and it's the turbulent area of hot gas that rises to the surface, cools, and then sinks back into the deep layers. This is what we call convection current, and is what gives the photosphere that blotchy, flowy like magma. The photosphere reaches about 5,800 degrees Celsius, and you can think of it as that, that that is the surface of the sun. The last one is the chromosphere. The outermost part of the sun, the atmosphere, the corona, is a layer of gas that can reach over 3 million degrees Celsius. Beneath this lies the chromosphere, a 3,000 kilometer thick layer of hot, low density gas. So these are different parts of our sun. We're going to talk about solar winds, and we'll talk about other celestial bodies, and that is our lesson for today. So what are solar winds? Well, solar winds are hot, energetic gas that is ejected from the corona. Okay? And when they rush when they rush past the earth, we call them solar winds. And because of this, this, these solar winds are fatal to living organisms. Not only that, but they can also knock out electronics. Because of the amount of energy they have. They are what we call EMPs you can think of. But sometimes we see pretty colors that come out of them, and we call those the northern lights, and that's formed from because our magnetic field from the Earth deflects it and produces the northern lights. So we're going to finish off today's lesson on the different other celestial bodies we have. So we have a few. We of course have moons. What are moons? Moons are satellites that orbit planets. While asteroids are large rocks that are formed between Mars and Jupiter. And it's said that these were the remains of the formation of the solar system. Comets, comets are ice and rocks as well as gas and gas from outside the solar system. From a region of space we call the Kuiper Belt or the Oort Cloud. We also have trans-Neptunian objects which are any object that's beyond uh, Neptune. So trans 
Neptunian objects, which are objects beyond Neptune. So Pluto can be called a trans-Neptunian object. And then last but not least, we have the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is the farthest reaches of the sun's gravity. It's approximately approximately 50,000 so 50,000 to 100,000 astronomical units away. Now what is an astronomical unit? Well, an astronomical unit is a measurement of distance of between the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And it's approximately around 150 million kilometers away. So when we're talking about 100,000 astronomical units. That's about 100,000 distance from the Earth to the Sun. 100,000 of them. That's a pretty far distance. So, as always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.